Hey guys, welcome to the tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how you can run two instances of Tailspire on one machine from one copy. You might want to do this if you're a GM who is running a campaign and you want to have Tailspire set up so that you don't show your players all of your secrets. So in the example we've got in front of us here, we have one side over here is the DM view and this side over here is the player view. And what we can do is we can move our minis around and they'll move on both screens. We can choose to attack other minis and it plays on both. We can even open the DM overlay and add another mini without the player noticing until we want them to see that is. Now, there is actually a couple of ways we can do this. If you just want to run a completely vanilla, unmodded version of Tailspire in two windows, all you have to do is go to the install directory where you actually install Tailspire and double click on the tailspire.exe file. And that'll open a copy of Tailspire. But then if we go back and double click on it again, it'll open a second copy of Tailspire. And that's basically it. That's all you need to know to run an unmodded version of Tailspire. If you want to run modded, there's a couple of extra steps. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up Steam and we've got our Tailspire page open here. And if we go down to the bottom corner where it says add a game, we're going to click and add a non Steam game. We'll click on this. And what we're going to do, we're going to hit the browse button and we're going to go to our Tailspire install directory, which is usually in Steam, Steam apps, common Tailspire. We're going to click on the tailspire.exe file that's just there and click open. And then if we go to add selected program like that, we now see that if we do a search for Tailspire in our library list, we got two copies of Tailspire, the original one on top and the second one that we've just added on the bottom. Now, if you followed my modding tutorial that we've got here on the channel, you'll know that you have to add some launch arguments to get the shortcut to open with mods. So what we're going to do is if you go back and watch that video, it'll walk you through the steps on how to actually set up Tailspire for mods and how to launch it from Steam. So what we're going to do, we're going to take one of the steps from that video, which is the launch arguments. So we're going to right click on our top copy, our first copy of Tailspire here, right click, go to properties. And then that brings up this general tab with our launch options. We're going to triple click in the text file here, hold down control and press C to copy. Then we can close that window. Go to our second, technically non Steam version of Tailspire. Right click, go to properties, and we want to go to the launch options section here. Click, control V to paste, hit enter just to be safe, and then we can close that window. Now, what we need to do is if we click on our top copy of Tailspire here and hit play, that'll open our original modded version of Tailspire, which is great. And we can move that version over to the side just for a second. While that's running, what you want to do is go back over to our Tailspire list over here, right click on the non Steam game version, go to manage and add desktop shortcut. And up here, you can see we've got a new shortcut. Now we need to rename this. So I'm going to just click on it. Go to the end, add a space and call it Tailspire Multi. Hit enter and you notice the icon has changed. So what that means we can do now is we can use this one shortcut to launch multiple copies of Tailspire. So we're going to close that version of Tailspire there. We're going to minimize Steam. And now if we take our shortcut, we're just going to pop it down here for a second. We're going to double click to open our first copy. And then we're going to double click again to open our second copy. Then we're going to just drag one of these copies 
over to the side for the time being. Now, I've got these side by side, but you could have one on a separate screen if you wanted to, if you've got like a multi-screen setup. So if you were running this as a DM in person, you might have one of these, like say, for example, you'd have this one on your laptop screen, maybe, and this one off to the side on a secondary screen that only your players can see. So the next step is to make sure that you're both in the same campaign. So what you do, I'll just line these back up for a moment. We're going to go to our first copy over here. We're going to go in and we're going to use my modding tutorial campaign. Go into there, go over to the second copy, do the same thing. Modding tutorial, play. And then we have both copies side by side, just like that. Now, what we need to do is decide which one of these is going to be our player screen. So in my case, I'm going to use the right hand one. So I'm going to click on the right hand screen, go up to the top left hand corner where it says role GM. And we're going to change that to role player. I'm going to click and it changes over to player mode. One thing to check at this point is that this option here, this icon for game master is highlighted. This will actually enable the DM or GM to go into different modes like cinematic mode, turn-based mode, and it will actually go into the same mode on the player version as well. So make sure that that button there is highlighted. Now we can go into the DM mode over here and we can move the minis around. So say for example, we want to take this over there, we can turn it around. We can have our player character turn as well and vice versa as well. So say, for example, if your players wanted to move around, they could take control and move their mini away however far they want to go. They can even bring up the measuring tools and it comes up on both screens. Now, if you're in the DM view, which we're just going to bring forward a little bit, just so it's a little bit more focus of attention, going to bring our halfling in there a little bit. So what we can do is we can actually now switch between the different modes of the game. So at the moment, we're in build mode, which is pretty much self-explanatory. We can add different bits in like that, and they'll come on to the player version as well. So it allows you to drop in props, buildings, assets, that sort of thing. But we're just going to get rid of that one for a second. Another thing you can do, as I demonstrated earlier, is you can go into the DM slash GM overlay and add minis this way without the player seeing it. So we're going to grab another mini. Uh, we'll use this one and we can drop it right there. And if you notice, the player hasn't seen it. So that means we can actually take the time and just when the moment's right, we can reveal it. And then the moment the player moves, the mini appears. So that's great for setting surprise encounters or maybe traps or ambushes, that sort of thing. Now, the next thing you can do is you can go into turn-based mode. So we can enable that. As you see, it enables it in both windows. So we can actually go and set up just a quick turn order like that. Apply a turn order and then it'll actually pop up on both screens. So everyone knows exactly whose turn it is next. And you can take it from there. Another thing you can do, of course, is you can use cutscene mode. So if we click on that, both windows go into the mode. We can then go right in and get some close up shots of our bad guys. Very quickly. Grab that one. Grab that one. Grab that one. And zoom back out again. And then we can just display them to our player. Another thing you can do with cutscene mode is if you have a shot lined up like we have here with this hag, we can actually grab the hag and move them around in the shot. You can also grab other minis and maybe have them sneak up behind the hag if they're not paying attention, just to give your players an extra sense of what's going on in the story. You can also run combat in this mode. So say, for example, we wanted this beholder type creature to attack the hag that's in front of them, we can actually select them. See, we've got that creature selected. Right click on the hag, go to attacks, just general attack, and it'll attack. Same for the players. If the player has control over their screen, over their character, 
they can do the same thing. So they can move their mini over there, say, and then they can actually go and attack the beholder in retribution. And then you get to decide whether or not they hit or not. And don't forget, you can also press spacebar to bring up the dice and they'll actually display on both screens. So say, for example, you wanted to do a roll against the players, you could roll it and it would pop up on both. Now, one snag that you might encounter is you may launch into your board and you can see everything fine on your GM screen, but your players can't see anything. So the solution to this is to go to your player's mini on your screen, right click, go down to GM tools, click, then go up to player permissions. And it's here that you assign the other window, this window, to be the owner of this mini. So we click on that and then everything shows up on the other screen. Now, one other thing you can do, which is really, really useful and helpful, is you can actually download an app which will allow you to have multiple mice as inputs on one computer. So you'd be able to have one mouse for the DM and one mouse for the players. Now, this would be especially useful if you're playing in person with a separate TV screen for the player view. You could then give, say, a wireless mouse to the players that they could pass around and they would be able to operate and move around in their own view without you having to operate both screens. Now, there are a few apps that you can get which actually enables you to do this. This one right here called Plural Input is one I've actually used in the past and it works absolutely fine. Although recently, at a time of recording, they have had some driver issues which they're currently working through. It is a free piece of software while it's still in beta, but obviously check the support pages before downloading. Another option, which I haven't tried yet, but I have watched quite a few videos on YouTube about, is Mouse Mux. This operates in a very similar way to Plural Input. It allows you to set up multiple mice for independent inputs on the same computer. So either of these apps will actually let you have multiple inputs, one for you, one for the players, so they can operate each instance of Tailspire independently. Do note though, that if you don't have a separate mouse input, you, the GM or DM, will have to operate both screens. So make sure you keep them both in view. And that's pretty much it guys. That is how you run two instances of Tailspire and also modded Tailspire from one installation copy. Hope you guys found this useful. If you did, make sure to subscribe, like, and ring the notification bell to never miss a future video. Thanks for watching and happy gaming.